right. So we just go and talk. Um, so I actually made notes again, okay, uh, because you know me, ADHD brain, I'll lose it if I don't write it down. Um, I recently read The Tao Te Ching on my book reading channel, and, um, and I ended up giving the book away, right, because that's what I do. I read the book, and then I give the, the gift of knowledge away, right, um, and, I remember uh, one of the last things that the person had said to me who received it, I don't know them personally, um, I had met them, right, they're an acquaintance now, I guess, um, but one thing that they said to me that stuck was that they were a Taoist, and me being the Aquarius that I am, I, I really kind of like over on this <laughs> on this one statement I am a Taoist right because I've been studying Taoism and Buddhism since I was like 15 so it's been like almost 17 years now of meditating and studying <laughs> and learning and um the reason that this kind of struck me right is in this paper so <laughs> I'm gonna read it to you um funny to me when people claim to be a Buddhist or a Taoist because both philosophies challenge you to lose your sense of identity in things and to identify with your highest self, which is not separate from anyone else. So to call yourself a Buddhist or a Taoist, you're claiming an identity in that philosophy. To be is to do, right? So Jesus once said, know me by my works. If your philosophy is backed by action or practice, people will know your philosophy by what you do, not what you say you do. A Buddhist or a Taoist seeks no accolades, no external validation because they know themselves. That's all the validation they need. This, uh, this actually reminds me of this story that I heard once about this man who went to a monastery to become a monk, right? Now, I'm hella paraphrasing this because... I don't remember verbatim, right? <laughs> Forgive my memory, but I'm giving you the gist of it. Um, so, upon his arrival, an elder monk asked him, Who are you? And the man replied, My name is blank. I'm from blank. I have these credentials, etc. Um, and the monk shook his head and he was like, Nah, that's not who you are. Um, <laughs> And, uh, he's like, come back when you know who you are. And, um, the man leaves completely speechless, thinking to himself, what kind of cryptic bullshit is that? So, he went in search of himself and returned after much deliberation with a better answer this time, right? So, the monk asks him again, who are you? And the man replies, I'm the sum of my experiences, my transgressions, my setbacks, my wins, my losses, my deeds, both good and bad. Um, and the monk starts laughing and said, nah, <laughs> that's not who you are. Come back when you know who you are. <laughs> and then the man gets pissed, right? And he's like, gangster, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> I've traveled, I've seen the world, I've gained it self-awareness through shadow work and none of this is good enough i've had it with this cryptic bullshit this cryptic bullshit fuck this flips a table or two you know he's mad right and so <clears throat> then the smokes or the smoke <laughs> the monk smiles right and he is like there you are right just raw authentic in the present moment you are not your failures or your successes, your duties, your titles, or your experiences. You are you, and what you are isn't words. What you are is energy expressing itself. No words can truly describe who you are. Your actions do. Your expression does, right? Even Alan Watts. Watts. Oh my god, I cannot talk. Hold on. Let me fix this problem. Even Alan Watts wouldn't claim to be enlightened it's evident in his works right quit explaining who you think you are and simply be the person you want to be show up as the ver best version of yourself 
you might fuck it up sometimes. Humans have an erroneous nature, so don't beat yourself up for not being constantly at the top of your game. Showing up as your best self only requires you to do your absolute best with what you've got. You are energy expressing itself. So express yourself. Express yourself. Okay, whatever. At the end of it all, it won't matter what anyone thinks of you. People straight up hated Van Gogh, Jesus Christ, and Edgar Allan Poe, right? But their names are immortalized by their works, their creations. So don't limit yourself by identifying with the titles or the status. Those things are not who you are. Just simply be who you are, right? Nice people never have to tell you they're nice people. People will inevitably recognize if they're nice or not by their behaviors. So be the person that you want to be seen as, right? And I know, like, <laughs> a lot of people are probably like, mm, da -da -da, and I'm sorry if I offend. I just need to be kind of forthright and blunt about this. You don't need to tell us who you are, right? Nobody needs to tell anybody who they are. Your actions will say it for you, right? People can sit there and gossip about you all the fuck they want behind your back. But then people who actually hang out with you on a day-to-day -day basis, who see, like, the evidence in your actions, the evidence in your works, then they know who the fuck you are, right? They don't need any kind of anything from anybody else, right? So let people slander your fucking name. Let them say what they gotta say, right? People will do that, right? We're all enemies in somebody's story, right? Myself included, right? And sometimes I'm all right with that, okay? <laughs> like, fuck it. That is what, if that's the role that I'm supposed to serve in helping somebody grow, then okay, cool. I'm sorry that it, it had to be that way, but at least I'm helping. Um... The thing is, is that there's such like a, a self-righteous nature in the way that we think we know who we are, right? We think we have all the answers. And really, what we would explain ourselves to be rarely matches up with what we actually are on the day-to-day, -day, right? On the grind, <laughs> you know? Like how you actually show up as, how your reactions, your responses actually are, right? And so... Just be the expression of the universe that you're destined to be, right? And if you're not satisfied with who you are, change it. <laughs> Make it better. Evolve who you are. Whatever, you know? Because I don't feel like you can actually be dissatisfied with your authentic self in reality. I think the only aspects of yourself that you can be dissatisfied with are aspects of yourself that don't actually align with who you truly are who your higher self is right who your intuition is training you to be right like that's why I feel like intuition is so important it really guides us to being the person that we're meant to be and showing up in the energy we're meant to show up in you know and we're gonna fuck it up that's part of this journey right you're gonna fuck it up and that's what makes you perfect i hate when people say nobody's perfect no that's a fucking lie okay i'm fucking perfect no okay no kidding um no but to be perfect is to extend the effort to be perfect right to be perfect is to have is to give your best constantly right you might not measure up to what you would like to measure up to, right? You might have to learn. You might have to do the trial and error and, you know, screw it up a few times, whatever. Like, but that's what makes you perfect, okay? That's what makes you a perfect human being because human beings aren't, they, they are erroneous in nature. I already done said it, right? And so... It's part of your perfect nature to fuck it up, right? Like when you're trying to walk. Guess what? I was I was walking just like the other day and I tripped over fucking air, okay? Like I've known how to walk for years, okay? Decades even. And I still fucking trip. I still stumble when I walk, right? And that's how this 
journey is for humans to per be perfectly human you have to fuck it up sometimes to be perfectly human you gotta piss people off sometimes right not intentionally but like you know if your truth offends somebody else then like we offend people without even meaning to okay like we trigger people without even meaning to and that's part of the erroneous nature of the humans right and that's fine <laughs> right and i know people are like that ain't fine but it is it is fine because people are growing from this people are learning from this people are like i'm not going to be like that anymore or whatever you know um, or maybe I won't say that thing because I didn't expect it would have that kind of response, you know, whatever. There's growth and, you know, even being the responder to certain things, right? Being like, well, why does that offend me? Why am I so personally victimized by another person's opinion or whatever, you know? And then there's growth there too because we have to address it and acknowledge it and be like, yo, gangsta, what up though? right like who the fuck are you <laughs> um show up show up as it it's like charles manson actually had the best fucking response to that question right <laughs> i know y'all are like charles fucking manson yeah 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 the dude was a little woke okay i'm sorry i have to admit i hate what he did but I, some of the shit he said i was like fuck he was more woke than i realized like, when they asked him, they were like, who are you? And he's like, bah, 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 and he's doing all these crazy faces and shit. That's who he was. Energy expressing itself, right? Like, he literally, he's like, I'm not words. I can't tell you words. He didn't say that because, you know, he was expressing who he is. But that's the gist of it, is that we're not words. Words came after us, actually. We can only describe as closely as possible. Alan Watts talks about this all the time. Or did. Whatever. I don't even know if the fool is still alive. He's been... He's been... I've been reading his shit since I was like 15 years old. And I just have never checked on him, to be honest. But, um... Because he's always alive, right? Reincarnation and shit. No matter what. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you know if the fool's alive. <laughs> I don't know. I should look into that shit. Um, but... <clears throat> Yeah, Ellen Watts would, you know, constantly, re like, replay that message, like, over and over, re-say it, so that we would know, like, we're not words. Reality is not words, right? Effort is not words. <laughs> Being is not words. You can't tell what you are, but you can sure as fuck be it, right? What you are came long before words, right? Words are limited. Words are subjective even because the one who speaks it may mean something completely different from the one who translates it in their own brain and then, you know, the one who receives it, you know? So if the speaker and the receiver are, you know, like... The speaker is trying to relay one message and the receiver is hearing it in the way that they want to hear it then you know there is no perfect way to really explain anything because our perception of what we hear is always going to be different from the reality it's like reading a book right we might all have a different idea of what fucking voldemort looked like in harry potter and then when we saw it on screen what he was supposed to look like and we're like I have Voldemort, right? Because how we received it wasn't the way that it was actually spoken, right? And that's why all of our realities are so fucking different, right? Our perceptive perceptions, our perspective, <laughs> our perspective shifts and changes and and it's based on our own worldview, how we receive information, right? Like, if somebody is explaining, like, a cloudy day, for example, right? Depending on where you grew up, 
if to you a cloudy day might be like a blue sky with like clouds all you know bunched up cumulus clouds here here but they're still blue you know you might perceive it that way or if you're from Oregon it's straight up gray right there's nothing just darkness and gray you know and it's like how like how we perceive things is based on our personal experience in life so like our perspective will never match one another's even the way that we see colors right it depends on the number of cones in your retinas right so like if I have more cones than you I could be a tetrachromat and see shades of colors that another person probably couldn't see you know and if you're colorblind well psh, you got baby cones <laughs> like but our perspective, even from eyesight, is never going to be the same. Even our hearing is never the same. How we feel things is never the same. It is so subjective. It is so unique to us and how we experience our reality. So the way that we speak our reality is going to also be received differently from how we intend it to be received, right? And we learn that a lot with texts, right? And you text and it's like if you don't, if you can't add your tone to your text then sometimes there's going to be a misunderstanding because we're reading and receiving um or we're sending and receiving messages that like aren't in alignment <laughs> um and so yeah it's kind of um a lot to um and where was I? Okay. Um, but yeah, so like if all of our reality is our own hallucination, right? <laughs> um, it's our own like little subjective box, right? Then that means that there are what almost what nine billion, eight or nine billion different parallel universes right now just right here on the same planet right if we're only talking about human lives that's not even talking about all the other species right there's like what 25.5 billion chickens on this planet i learned that from a 10 year old <laughs> um but yeah so like that's 25.5 billion subjective universes based on just chickens, right? <laughs> like, and think about our subjective parallel universes. We're in the same fucking world experiencing entirely different lives, right? Entirely different feelings, entirely different sensations, entirely different everything. Like, you could... It's like, like, haven't you ever thought that was weird, having siblings that you grew up with, right? You had the same parents, the same fucking environment, the same schools, the same everything, and, like, one of them becomes, like, a, a drugged-up gangbanger, and the other one becomes a fucking, like, teacher with fucking presidential dean's list credentials from college, you know? And it's like... How did that shift? How did that change? Because of how they were receiving the information based on their subjective experience of living, right? Like, it was so different, even if it was right there, a parallel reality, right? Yeah, we're getting deep in this shit. And with how different we are, how separate we are, we're also the same goddamn thing. We're just energy experiencing. It's like if energy was just a bunch of damn cameras, right? If you think about that, it's like, what do you think we are? We're a walking antenna. All we do is take in information and translate it through this fucking computer. And it's like, which is our brain, you know? It's like, how do we smell? How do we taste? How do we feel? How do we hear? How do, you know, we do anything? Like, all this shit. How do we have intuition? How do we feel the electromagnetism from another person's heart from across the universe? You know, like quantum entanglement because we're still the same goddamn guy. Like what separates us is matter, which is my phone died. So here we are at my charger. But like I was saying, 
The thing that separates us is matter, which is barely a fraction of 1% of what we actually are or what anything actually is in our reality, which is weird because a majority of our perception is this third dimensional material world, right? But there's like 11 known, known dimensions, right? That we know of. And we're only chilling on the third dimension. You think that's, you think that's accurate? Like, cause I feel like we're perceiving in a way so many more, right? Time being the fourth dimension, right? And being able to tap into our intuitive self and our spiritual self and being able to expand our awareness based on the electromagnetism in our heart center, right? Like the chakra systems, like in ancient Egypt, they they recognize or they found the actual glands that connect to the different chakras, right? These are real glands that you can activate in your fucking body. And these glands make you powerful as fuck, right? And these, we're just walking antennas though. We're like walking cameras. We're just sitting here experiencing everything and relaying that message back to whatever the fuck we come from, right? whatever it is receiving the energy right our higher selves if you will we're like we're like fucking avatars you know we're just walking around avatars of the same thing right having different experiences re responding different because we had different experiences our subjective universe is so fucking different from one another we're just not we're not the same but we are the same 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 but different <laughs> okay like you you catch my drift though like it's just there's so much to it and I feel like there's just so much that we ignore in our like or that we limit our perception with you know where we we don't strive to understand one another or to understand the perspective of another because we, our our experiences and our lives are so subjective, right? To us, the universe started the day we were born, right? We can't actually fathom, like, how the universe existed before us, right? Because we weren't the camera experiencing it or we were in different bodies, right? And, um... And I feel like that's also why we need to, like, why energy regenerates itself and, re and lives out different lives, 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 <laughs> um, you know, different cycles, different things. Um, we're meant to try to understand one another, but we don't have just hearing to understand one another, right? We know 80% of our language is body language, <clears throat> you know, like 20% of it is actually verbal. We could understand people that speak completely different languages just based on their body language and their energy output, you know. And so we are perceiving in way more than just this third dimensional, you know, life. <laughs> we do experience more than that dogs can hear in dimensions we can't hear and you know cats can see in dimensions we can't see in um we're not even the most evolved right like we know god's favorite animal on the whole planet is a platypus okay like come on look like literally look up the platypus and all their fucking magical abilities okay best species on the planet also, they look like a platypus because they are a platypus, right? But honestly, if you want to think about the perfect species, the perfect, the perfect one, right? The superior one of all of us on this whole goddamn thing. It's a goddamn platypus, okay? It ain't even close to human, right? Humans are like probably like six on the list, right? Not even. There's so many better animals, right? So, and humans sit around thinking that they're so special because they have a hyoid bone and learned how to speak with more articulation. But really, being able to use sonar, right? Being able to, like, think about a platypus can close its eyes, hold its breath, like, plug its ears, you know, whatever, and it could still sense exactly where you are and what you're doing if you're in its vicinity, right? Because it uses the electromagnetism of your energy, right? To perceive you. It perceives beyond, you know? And just like we have the 
capacity for, but we rarely take the time to actually work with those energies to really learn how to translate what energy is yours and what are you feeling from the outside world you know a lot of the times we feel energy from the outside world especially empaths you know you feel that energy from somebody else and then you take it on and identify with those feelings as if those are your feelings but they have no source right so that's how you can recognize that they're not your feelings that you're taking on somebody else's energy when you're like wait i have no reason to feel this way then you know it helps you to understand you know anger secondary emotion so if you're feeling angry out of nowhere that's not because you're feeling angry out of nowhere you're absorbing like a goddamn sponge the energy around you and you need to change your environment right that's what it's saying right if you feel like something's off too then that's your intuition warning you or telling you something and you have to literally be in the mindset of like listening to your intuition and trusting yourself when you're being told these things in order to understand how to use your higher senses. I just went on a whole ass tangent about this. But yeah, I mean, if you want to tap into your higher self and your higher understanding, your higher senses, then like... It's not impossible. You just have to learn how to separate your personal energy from the energy that you are translating through, you know, receiving, you know, because you're an antenna. So you're receiving energy constantly, sound waves, light waves, electromagnetic waves, <laughs> you know, microwaves, um, whatever the case, you know, and yeah. I'm going to leave it at that because I could just sit here and go on a tangent all day long about, like, energy and all that. But I feel like I said what I got to say. So, namaste. I love you guys, and I will catch you later.